I hope that you're following the Lord by according to his word, according to his inspired and errant word, and you're not following someone like me or somebody else in X Game ministry or some other pastor or some other missionary. We need to be following the Lord Jesus Christ. He will never disappoint us. He will never falter. Those of us who are human will always make a mistake, right? We'll always blunder, but the Lord never does. In the long run, all things work together for his glory and our good, and we can count on him no matter what. Because I posted a video five years ago after my wife and I got married, we were on our honeymoon and I posted a video that, that explained that, that I perceived it to be the Lord's reward to me and hoped that other ex-gay guys out there would receive a similar reward and was pretty prideful about kind of as, as though I was standing on the mountaintop or something. And because I did that, I feel that the Lord's convicting now to uh, come clean with you folks that... It hasn't been easy for the past five years. Uh, two 40-year-olds coming together, both with, with past lives and different baggage from situations and circumstances from the past, and then uh, hurts and brokenness and coming from different cultures and called to serve in a culture that's not her homeland and also not my homeland. It makes for a lot of strain and uh, not aligning on, on biblical teaching, on doctrine, has been, I believe, is the core reason, the fundamental problem with our marriage, that we're not, we're not seeing eye to eye on what the Bible says. I feel obligated to share this video. I really hesitated to, to make it public, but uh, I was very, very public with the announcement of the marriage and my pride during that, and, and I think I need to be, to be equally public with this and to come clean about uh, what's going on. So several months ago, we... I shared through a ministry update to our core prayer partners, those closest to us, that we had separated, living in separate places. So things have been pretty strained, to say the least. And as of today, we're up to, I think, eight different pastors from the U.S. to uh, Thailand to Cambodia over the, over the past five years. We're up to about eight different pastors. What got us into this predicament to begin with is that I rushed into marriage because being a missionary and called to, to call other men to purity in Christ, I really didn't want to be the one who was there uh, having premarital sex. So as we started to slip toward that, I kind of pulled the trigger to, to get married and, and uh, led my wife in that direction, which was a wrong choice. It was a wrong, uh, wrong decision to make. We were counseled not to move ahead without knowing each other very well, without having that foundation of trust, and I chose to do that anyway, so I take responsibility for my action there. And when we got into uh, further, deeper canyons in our marriage from the beginning until now, we received pretty ungodly counsel. After I rejected the good godly counsel, then I received uh, the penalty for my, for my error. And so I feel that there's been a time of judgment that the Lord's allowed some tough stuff to happen uh, through some poor counsel, some unbiblical counsel. In these last days, it's very difficult to find a pastor who's really willing to speak difficult Bible truth. So we've taken the brunt of that, and uh, here we are, because of my original mistake and, and the domino effect uh, proceeding. So there's been chaos and confusion, and we're in separate places now, but still living in the same town. And uh, I just really think that it's, it's important to note that no matter what happens, that God's word is still true. It's just a matter of, of us, of the church, following it faithfully in these last days. Uh, I think it's also important to, to reiterate, especially to ex-gay guys coming up behind me down this similar path, this narrow, difficult path, to be aware, to be wary, uh, to not rush into to a life-changing, life-altering decision, uh, to not rush into that, to allow time for the Lord to speak and the Lord to reveal and bring clarity around whether or not that's really the wife that He has for you. 
uh, I don't believe that it's always just a matter of just find some other believer. If you have if you have very specific circumstances like coming out of a, a gay lifestyle, you really need someone very understanding. You're called to witness to the LGBT, very, very difficult, witness to prostitutes and transgender folks. Nobody really wants to do that. Nobody really wants to join in that. So it's going to take a very unique person, not just any believer, to, to join arms and, and follow you, the husband as the Lord's called us to lead the wife, not to follow the wife. So that's another thing, uh, really, the, what I feel is the core of our, of our disagreement, of our conflict, is, that, is the twisting of the, of the biblical principle, principles of marriage, the chair passage being Ephesians 5, the creation account, uh, that the husband is, is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, and he's to lead her. She's his helpmate. She was created for the purpose of being his helpmate. So it's not a role reversal in these last days just because of rights movements or feminist hermeneutics or queer hermeneutics or something. Uh, this is just as much at the core of what I'm called to battle against as anything. And, and I really feel that it's not coincidence so that I can learn the hard way and have a real passion and a fire for defending the faith. Uh, on this doctrine specifically, that not only did the Lord create male and female, and Satan comes in and tries to role reverse, right, to, to deceive and speak to the woman that she should really be a man, her heart's to be a man, and that, that the man was really created to be a woman, it's demonic deceptions, just like the enemy comes in, just like the Garden of Eden, tempted the wife who was not authorized to make the decision to lead the husband down the wrong path, but she did, and uh, so we're, we're still paying for that to this day, and many will be damned to hell for eternity because of her stepping out of her position of authority and leading her husband and him following her. It's his fault. So he ultimately is accountable for his home because he was appointed the head of the home, right? And so um, that's the situation with my, my thing uh, here, with the mistake, the sin that I committed when I stepped out and went against godly counsel to marry someone that I barely knew to join arms and, and try to lead her. She was not willing to follow, and it's been chaos and confusion ever since. And so, uh, I don't mean to talk down about my wife, it's just a matter of be careful about life-changing decisions. Uh, and the church is not really equipped these days to handle insurrection. The church will not stand with the husband, they will, they will by default stand with the wife 99% of the time, and I've learned that the hard way. Uh, because she's the weaker vessel, because it's the days when Hollywood rules the church. I don't know what's going on. There's, there's a lot. Uh, a personal theory is that women fill the church pews, right? And women are the ones putting money in the offering plates. So uh, when it comes time to stand with somebody, you might be more willing to stand with a woman than a man and women's rights in these last days. But long story short, we are separated and uh, God's word is true. Uh, even more so than ever, it's just that we, the church, are not always the best at being faithful to the Word of God and following it. If we were truly faithful to the Word and did what we were, we were told, our godly counsel is given, if we heeded the warnings and, and fought down this narrow, difficult path that leads to eternal life like soldiers for Christ, without major error like I committed, uh, major mistake, major blunder, major sin like the one that I committed when we got married too soon, then things would be much uh, less difficult. We would be persecuted for the right reasons and not for the wrong. So take time to make uh, lifetime decisions. Satan's in a hurry. The Lord never is. And stand on his word. And, and in this situation, just like any other, Romans 8.28 still applies, whether it's in this life or the next. At some point, the Lord will work this together for his glory and our good. And so that's what I'm trusting him to do, to... Uh, that his will will be done through this difficult situation. Uh, to, to address common misconceptions. Will I return to my past life? Did this happen because I went back to my old gay life? No, it didn't. Do I, can, do I plan to take a break from ministry or, or uh, hide under the couch or take, take a year's break until we can resolve everything? I've escalated to eight pastors and it's still not resolved. and. Uh, we've been separated now for a considerable amount of time, and I think it's just a matter of uh, making that final decision. So I plan to continue in ministry as long as I have a pulse. Praise the Lord. Uh, the Lord's rescued me from sin and the fear of death, 
and he's given me a mission and I'm to stop at nothing. I'm to be unstoppable, to follow like a soldier. And I made a big blunder here, but that doesn't mean that I can't get up and continue to fight forward. And I think that's a message that we all need to heed, that he's never done with us, that the call of God is not removed from a man's life just because he makes a big mistake. And so get up, repent, fight forward, and fight to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. Praise the Lord. His mercies are new every morning.